So hey guys, welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. Before we get started talking about the money stuff in this video, I wanna show you what I have in the crock pot. It's very simple to make. I know a lot of you out there already make it, but it's an example of how you can be stretching items you have in the freezer, things you're getting from the store, how to make everything count, just like Granny did. Okay, this is an example of why the hog was the most was the most important thing on the homestead. If you go back historically, the hog was everything for multiple reasons. Hogs and your corn harvest. Okay, so you can stretch these items as far as you can possibly think. So right now at your stores, you have hands. Hopefully you're getting decent sale prices on them. Grab several, put them in the freezer. The other day I took one. This one is a little bit bigger than what I had the other day. The other one was just a two pounder. I like to take them. I like to cook them in the oven with a little bit of brown sugar, a little bit of honey. You can put pineapple on it, a little Dijon mustard, however you want to do it, okay? Cook it according to the directions. It's about 20 minutes per pound. We had a great dinner. We ate maybe half. You can throw some cranberries on there too. That's what I did. Let me show you that picture. Um, but <laughs> squirrel, um, we ate about half, okay? The other half, it's already pre-sliced. Then I put that in the refrigerator. We had a couple of pieces the next day for lunch. I snagged a piece for breakfast. Then today what I did is I took an, another portion, maybe a third or so, not quite, maybe a little more than a third. And I've cut it into cubes and I've put it into a, basically a bean and ham soup. I'm gonna show it to you, so simple to make. I have a few more end pieces left. I gave Sadie a treat, my old dog, of course she got a treat. And then, but I have a few end pieces left. I have then put those into a baggie and those are in my freezer now. So when I wanna make a quick pot of soup, whatever I'm doing, or if I wanna make a, a pot of beans or whatever, then I have that to put in there. So basically what you're looking at is one little ham, not even a big one. We have four people in the home right now, okay? And I am going to easily be able to make and stretch this over four different meals, two from the ham and some snacks. And then I guarantee you, we will eat tw at least twice. And I'll probably take my Nana some too of this soup, which is smelling fabulous. So my point is, is continue to be creative, okay? Think about the ways that you're using all the things in your pantry. Think about the things that Mamma did and guys be doing it. So all I did, if you've never made this, this is a staple for many, many homes, okay? And I'm probably gonna add a little bit more liquid. But what I did is I took actually two full pounds. I wanted a big soup, very hot here, guys. Two pounds of your white northern beans, and I soaked them overnight, okay? That's all that is. And then I sauteed up a small onion, I put some oil in it, uh, and then I put some garlic in it, put, did that in my cast iron, put that in here. I took a, a stalk, a little stalk of uh, celery, cut it up, took some carrots, cut them up. I used some herbs de Provence. Remember, I've talked about that before. Let me get it out of my cabinet here. Hang on here. Herbs de Provence, I've talked about getting that. You can get it multiple places, but the Trader Joe's is awesome. I threw in some herbs de Provence, uh, and basically, guys, I'm just letting it cook. You can add whatever spices you want, okay? You can do whatever you want. But most importantly, you are seeing I cubed up the ham, okay? That ham that was left over, look at that. It's all cooking up. So this is going to be tonight's dinner. I'll cook up some cornbread. Folks, I'm telling you right now, we're going to eat off of this at least twice. May put some in the freezer, and my Nana's going to get some too. Make everything count. Let nothing go to waste, Okay? Freeze what you can, save what you can, stretch what you can. All right, guys, this is going to be a little wonky, but I'm just going to be comfortable and we're going to talk like this, like you're in the kitchen with me and I'm in the kitchen with you. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. Make that soup, I'm telling you. If you want more directions, let me know. It's very simple, okay? Crock pot's going to do the work for you, mama. And that's exactly the way we like it. So listen, I wanted to update you on what happened with us and what happened with me in terms of my PayPal account, okay? Um, I'm gonna try to be very professional in my video here and in my uh, opinion and in my statements in terms of what has happened to us and what advice I'm going to be giving to you. Cheers. So I've made a video or two over the last several weeks 
pretty much um, explaining the situation what, with what happened with PayPal, uh, their, you know, their $2,500 fee, uh, which they said was for misinformation, and then basically said that was an accident, and they're not going to do it, and then it's crept up again. And a lot of things went back and forth with PayPal. Do your homework and decide what works best for you. I am not a, a banker, a financial advisor, a guru of any sorts, but I do know customer service. And I just want to say that I would not even advise uh, my worst enemy at this point to use PayPal. Just to let you know, that's how I feel about it. I attempted to finally close my PayPal account uh, a couple weeks ago, and they basically, it was a three-day debacle. I had to go through three different people. <laughs> I think actually a few more by the time the phone calls got transferred. Um, the first time I called, tried to get it canceled, um, the, the gal was super sweet, had, had no beef with her. She said, okay. Um, and the reason I had to call is because when I went into my account, I attempted to close it. It basically told me no and that I was going to have to call them. So I did, right? And so I finally got a hold of somebody. Now, this gal was nice. Uh, she was really sweet. And, um, she basically told me that I had some, there was something holding it up, okay? So she basically went through and she said, well, you bought something from like 1-800-Flowers. You know, I had bought stuff in the past through my PayPal account. So the girl told me, she said, well, I, I, let me go through. She said, I think I see what's holding everything up. I'm going to cancel it, et cetera, et cetera. And um, it should be good to go. I was like, really? Okay, well, this is great. I, I appreciate that. I said, when would I get an email from you guys verifying and letting me know that my account has been officially closed, right? She said, well, I'm thinking in a couple of hours. Okay. Well, by the next day, late into the late afternoon, um, my account was still open. Called again. I got a runaround. Account still stayed open, whatever. Um, we ended up getting to a third person. So this took over two to three days to really go through this. Long story short, this is where uh, my, this is the, the situation. If you have a subscription account, um, basically you need to go through and you need to cancel everybody that would be subscribed to you. If they, if you, they pay you for a service, um, whatever, whether they pay you monthly, weekly, whatever, whatever, you need to, A, let me tell you right now, you need to go through and cancel them. Now, before you do that, you want to make sure that you have transferred all of your customers or your business or whatever you do. You need to transfer that to something else. I had already done that, okay? So, I had already switched finally, and I switched to Square. I chose Square. I hope that I made the right decision with that. So far, so good. I, I really like the way that they've treated me so far, and they seem to be easy to work with. So I switched my business account, if you will. It's not even really much of a business account, but I switched my little account over to Square. Um, I thought everything had been squared away with PayPal, but obviously not. So I had to go through and cancel everything. I mean, so in other words, not only do I make sure my money isn't going, uh, you know, is, isn't coming into PayPal anymore, uh, but also anything that I have in terms of uh, if it's being drawn from my account as well. So two things you need to make sure you, I mean, you have nothing coming or going. It's all canceled, but that's still not going to help you cancel your account depending on how it's set up. Uh, and you also want to make sure that you've transferred over. Well, long story short, I ended up getting a, a gal on the phone and I explained to her that I wanted to cancel my account. She told me that we could not for 180 days. Um, because they have a clause in their terms of agreement that basically they have to leave the account open. Basically, if, some, if let's say you sell something and a person comes back and wants a refund or whatever, whatever, whatever. So it's, there's a 180 day clause there. So the account has to stay open due to that. Uh, and I explained to her, I said, well, you know, I don't have anything coming or going. I said, I've taken all of my money out. And she said, well, I understand, but these are the terms of agreements in terms of how we, it, it still takes 180 days. And I said, well, I have a question. Um, I said, in terms of your terms and agreement, I said, um, if you're going to be changing the way that you're doing things, uh, as far as holding your customers accountable, um, don't you think that you should give them enough time in advance to possibly cancel their account fully and close it 
so that they have an opportunity to not be tied to PayPal? Well, that's when the shenanigans really started, and um, we got a lot of runaround. It immediately fell to the whole $2,500 fee for misinformation, basically on, for, I don't know, whether you're on social media or at the grocery store. Um, she said that, that that was pulled back, and that was released by, basically, like, by mistake, I'm paraphrasing. And I said, well, do you have that in writing? I said, if I can't close my account for 180 days, even though I'm not using you at all whatsoever, um, can you send that to me in writing so that I have that as basically proof in the pudding that I'm, you're, I, you know, I'm not going to be held accountable for, for my business or what I do or whatever, if that's the case. And she said, well, we sent out information about that. And we, James and I looked at each other because we were both on the phone call and we said, well, we never received that information. And um, we would, is there a way to see that? Can you please email that to us? She said, no, no. Uh, so then we, we proceeded to say, okay, well, can you give us a number to call? It, uh, is there someone we can speak to or a, 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 you know, a, a branch of PayPal that we can talk to that can accommodate getting us this information? And she said, no. And then she fell into the argument of basically telling me that uh, she's not going to give us the number to somebody in corporate. And we were like, well, who, who, who holds, who, who is over this, what you're talking about? She said it was customer service. And I said, well, aren't you customer service? And she said, yes. <laughs> so here's the bottom line, folks. Let me tell you this again. You do what you want. I, if this, if PayPal is good to you and you're comfortable, then that's your business. Um, but we felt like um, it was more than time to separate. Um, I got very um, upset and, and really expressed the whole idea of, okay, well, if you're, if you're going to be um, in the future, let's say you're going to be changing, you're going to be holding people to a standard that they didn't originally agree to. Um, and when they try to say, no, I'm not, I want to cancel, um, you need to give them, if it's going to take 180 days for your folks, uh, your, your customers to cancel their account, you need to give them more than 180 days full notice in order to do so. Um, it, it got actually a little bit ugly from that point and, um, uh, you know, and, uh, I, I just want to express that I'm really disappointed in PayPal, uh, really disappointed in where how it turned. Um, I want to encourage you to do what's best for you, your family, your farm, your house, your business, and um, if you know, and proceed forward. Because here's the deal, folks: every dollar right now to everybody uh, really matters, and we don't have the time to be playing games with technology companies, okay? It's not even a bank, okay? And lucky for me, I don't have any money really in the account. So I, I did my due diligence prior to this situation. Um, but at the same time, I'm not going to be able to completely and formally close my account until about April. I have put them on notice in terms of uh, my situation, what I'm not agreeable to. I totally agree that you should probably do the same. I don't see how you're going to be held liable or accountable to something that you didn't even have time to possibly be formally um, notified about or to say, nope, I'm not going to do that. Um, if I'm wrong here, I'm wrong, but that's how I feel about it. So I just want to say that if you have the, the chance of closing your PayPal account to move to something different um, or just to not have something like this altogether, you know, these companies... I, I'm not just trying to throw PayPal under the bus here because that's who I have, obviously, my experience with. We need to be very, very aware of how these companies are treating all of us, okay? Um, because as you can hopefully guesstimate, as we continue to proceed forward and as the economy continues to unravel, um, you're going to see companies become more desperate to keep business. You're going to see companies, in my opinion, this is my opinion, um, I mean, what if they, what if a company just gets so desperate that they just keep your money altogether? Um, I have been getting emails from people that have had a lot of problems with PayPal in terms of freezing their accounts. They don't know why. 
Um, I can't really speak to other people and their, their private situation, but I am saying that I am seeing people say things, and maybe you are too. So I just want to A, uh, encourage you to really think about what are you doing with your money? Where is it sitting? I wouldn't be letting my money sit in anything at this point. Uh, you take that as you want and as you will and do what's best for you and your family and your situation. That's your business, not mine. That's just how I feel about it. Um, and I certainly wouldn't be involved with a company that is trying to completely jerk me around, uh, which is unfortunately what this comes across as, whether they like to admit it or not, um, which, you know, each they will deal with those ramifications, I'm sure. Uh, Square so far, uh, I looked into several different things and Square if for me has been great. The good thing about Square so far is it was easy to set up. Uh, very nice little format. Um, for a business uh, and services. And the good thing about Square is the money gets transferred to you within 24 hours. So it doesn't sit in an account and you're letting it sit there thinking that it's safe. No, it automatically, um, it's just switching on its own within around 24 hours to whatever bank account or whatever you've got going, okay? So you do what works best for you. I just wanted to update you on the situation. I've uh, I really don't like um, scenarios like this. I think it's very uh, unfortunate. Uh, like I said, I've been with PayPal for a long time. And, um, you know, each their own. But, if, like I said, if you're my mom, if you're my best friend, if you're my dad, if you're my child, if you're my neighbor, um, I would advise you to get your money out. That's my personal opinion. And I hope that it has advised uh, not advised you because I'm not trying to, I'm not a financial advisor, but I hope it helps you make the proper decision because like I said, every penny counts for everybody now. And shady businesses and business decisions is not something we need to be messing with. Hope that's clear. Guys, if you like the video, like and subscribe. Comment down in the comment section about what you're seeing and what experience you're having. Do what works best for you, okay? Clearly, I'm saying that uh, very upfront and open, um, but I am being upfront in terms of what has happened to us, and I care about you and you being able to take care of yours. Like, subscribe, and share, and guys, we'll see you on the next.